if we should wait for a few more or should we start the lecture right away okay i think we really should begin okay uh, welcome everyone to the fourth lecture on dl nlp you are attending the shala course and this lecture would be about relationship extraction in natural language processing i am diptesh kanojia i am a phd research scholar from iit bombay and assisting me today would be prashant sharma who delivered yesterday's lecture on text classification and moving on so the agenda for today's lecture is i will try to introduce the problem of relationship extraction to all of you i would cite a few examples and the applications of relationship extraction in the real world scenarios and then we will move on to see the approaches towards relationship extraction in a little bit of a detail and immediately after that i would conclude the slide please note that we would not be getting into classification approaches for relationship extraction this lecture would be more about trying to establish the motivation behind the problem trying to understand the problem of relationship extraction you anyways have had a lecture on text classification and relationship extraction is more or less a classification problem the motivation behind relationship extraction is very simple that you have a lot of unstructured data on the internet you have websites you have people tweeting left right and center all the time you want to make some sense of that unstructured data you want to see what information can be churned out of that data and hence relationship extraction becomes a really meaningful and important problem in natural language processing because once you can make sense out of that unstructured data once you can identify patterns then you can use those patterns to maybe identify or predict what kind of a uh, predict that predict what may happen later the goal for relationship extraction problem is simple you have unstructured text and you want to dig out structured data from it so relationship extraction is actually a sub problem of another uh, problem in nlp and that basically is information extraction and information extraction is the task of extracting information from text in ie or information extraction there can be many different problems one of them which i can recall is extracting identities and linking them together for example if you have texts uh, if you have a text which says barack obama the president of united states declared an emergency and in the very next line it says the president quoted xyz reasons then linking the identity of barack obama with the president in the next line is the problem of identity linking and this is also this also lies under the umbrella of information extraction hi uh, are we going to restart at 9:05 no sir i have i have already started delivering the lecture okay usually I'm, we wait a few minutes for people to join uh i understand that but i saw that recording sign and i thought maybe <laughs> no 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 i yeah, that's whenever i log in it automatically starts recording okay. if you if you don't mind can we start again because yeah yeah of I course i just be uh, just now a few people joined okay fair that's fair thank you yeah sure okay let's restart the lecture hello everyone today we will be discussing relationship extraction in nlp and uh, hi i am diptesh kanojia i am a phd research scholar in iit bombay and assisting me today would be prashant sharma who is a master student here at iit bombay the agenda for today's task would be trying to introduce the problem of relationship extraction and establishing the motivation behind it further i would cite some examples of what kind of relationships or what are the types of relationships which need to be extracted from the text and what are the applications of relationship extraction in real world scenarios then we would discuss in detail multiple approaches to relate towards relationship extraction problem 
from right from the classical approach of hand built patterns to the unsupervised approaches which are being tried and tested today and then i would immediately conclude the slides after uh, discussing the approaches and features in detail please keep in mind that text classification has already been the lecture on text classification has already been delivered yesterday and i do not want to get into classification again because you have just had the lecture and relationship extraction inherently is a classification task the motivation for relationship extraction is very simple you have a lot of unstructured data on the internet and you want to make some sense of that data so basically you have a lot of web pages and you want to know what is the content on those web pages and you want to make some sense out of all the unstructured content on web pages for example you have wikipedia which is a very general domain knowledge base and from wikipedia if you want to extract information about a particular identity or a particular person then information extraction or relationship extraction is something that you would want to do and also you have people tweeting left right and center all the day you would want to collect all those tweets probably to in uh, probably to you know train a model and then predict what's happening so for example if a lot of people are tweeting about the fact that they are experiencing health problems then you probably know that it's a disease outbreak so unstructured data on the internet can be collected and then formed into a proper structure and from that you are you will probably be able to predict a lot of things the goal of relationship extraction is pretty simple you have the unstructured text or unstructured documents or a lot of tweets and you want to make some sense out of it relationship extraction is actually a sub problem of information extraction in nlp they call it text analytics commercially but there are a lot of problems under the umbrella of information extraction one of them which is also very important although it's considered a little trivial is identity linking or extracting identity so if you have a text which says barack obama the president of the united states declared an emergency and in the very next line say it says the president cited x y z reasons for declaring the emergency you would want to link the identity of barack obama with the presidents with the president or you would want to link barack obama with obama reoccurring in the same text somewhere else so that's the problem of identity linking extracting the relations between identities is something that we would be discussing in detail today so san francisco is located in california this sentence gives you information that san francisco is a type of city it is located in the state of california although a lot of this information is implicit and we understand it as humans because we have context we have background knowledge but machines of course do not understand it so to be able to understand to be able to at, at the very least extract the information that san francisco is something that is located in somewhere so that is the problem of uh, relationship extraction under the umbrella of information extraction there are a lot of other sub problems in ie for example essay grading uh, where you try to automatically grade the essays noun compound interpretation where two nouns which which co occur with each other for example apple pie means a pie made of apple so in apple pie it's a noun noun compound but you don't really have the information in text which is implicit that it is a pie made of apple so noun compound interpretation is also under the umbrella of information extraction and finding out larger events that are taking place for example a disease outbreak if a lot of people are tweeting as i as i said earlier then you are tweeting about their health problems then you can probably find out you know what that there is a disease outbreak in this city or in this particular location so what you have want to do is you have text and for humans textual abstract is basically summary but you want structured knowledge extraction from the text so if a text says that p53 is a protein bax is a protein p53 has function apoptosis 
this is something that you probably want to extract and hence find out that in the category of proteins p53 exists in the category of proteins bx also exists so basically you would be able to find out that this particular uh, portion of text says that uh, this particular portion of uh, text tells us that this name is a protein this name has a function and this function is involved in cell death so the human summary which is written in text when it goes to structured knowledge it looks something like this so these relations are something that you would want to work on there are a lot of applications of relationship extraction in real world scenarios i don't know if you use google scholar or not but it's a really nice uh, it's a really nice knowledge base for anyone who is into research of course you probably use flipkart and amazon and they use relationship extraction on the on their internal databases for uh, creating a better shopping engine and for, to be able to search products so when you enter you need a mobile under 10k on amazon or under flipkart then they try to break down your search query and see that you want the product mobile you want its price to be under 10k and hence you see a list of mobiles so this actually works on amazon and flipkart most of the times i have done that and there are other applications as well but let's not uh, spend a lot of time on this i'm sure you understand what i mean there are quite a lot of real world scenarios where relationship extraction is applied let's look at this example so this is a news cutting where the associated press says that there has been a price hike in there has been a fare hike uh, by united airlines and this is a news cutting but the question here is the basic question here is what kind of relations do you want to extract from this text so the mo uh, the most common relationship extraction triple or tuple if you want to call it is between a subject then an object and the relationship between them so from this text you can clearly see that american airlines is a subsidiary of amr tim wagner who is an employee of american airlines united airlines is a subsidiary of ul so this is the information that you can get from this text if relationship extraction is applied properly let us look at some types so the types that the types of relationships that can ex, that can be extracted from this text or that are predefined are person to person so x person is married to x y person x is the mother of y organizational affiliations x is the spokesman for y x is the president of y I, i'm sure you understand then there are location based i gave uh, location based relationships i gave you the example of san francisco which is a city which is located in california and hence there exist pre exist a lot of types and there are quite a few data sets using which you can perform relationship extraction some more types from a very old data set this is called the ace or the ace data set it was released in 2003 that uh, a person can have a particular role that a organization can be a part of something and city can be located at something and then there are of course social relationships among people parent sibling so this data set basically gives you types and then subtypes of relationships freebase is also an important data set which has approximately 23 million entities and thousands of different relations which can also be used for the task let's look at an example of relationship extraction during a disease outbreak so i'm sure you're know, you are you're aware that covid-19 is has been declared a pandemic and there is a lot of research going on uh, uh not just medical research or trying to get, uh, come up with vaccines for covid-19 but there are a lot of articles out there which talk about covid-19 and 
if you look at this page on towards data science, you'll be able to find out information extraction based techniques which are being used or relationship extraction based techniques which are being used for trying to get information from those articles. There's a Kaggle page as well. I'm sure you would find it interesting if you have a look at it. And if you look at this table, this is the kind of data they are collecting. And this table is basically from Kaggle. If you go to that page, I'm sure you'll uh, get an idea of what they're doing. Uh, the most popular tracker for COVID-19 in India, which is covid19tracker.org, uh, their GitHub page is here. And what they do is they look at tweets from people, they look at the newspaper articles, and they look at the government agency data, which has been released. And from all this data, the, the uh, the data that they collect in raw form is located at this API page and then they perform information extraction and they find out how many number of cases are actually confirmed, how many number of cases uh, of COVID are actually active in India. Uh, you should go look at the API and their GitHub page as well. Similarly, the Kaggle page also provides you uh, with uh, different bar charts and different uh, distribution charts for the uh, confirmed and active cases for different countries. So this is just an example of Tunisia as to how COVID uh, rose there in number of cases. Now, since I have already given you some examples and I hope I've established a clear motivation for relationship extraction, before moving on to uh, the approaches, the different approaches to relationship extraction, I would like to talk about uh, how these relationships can be extracted. So one of the most key, so a key component is the meaning of a word. So if you look at uh, uh, this example, which says hyponymy, San Francisco is, the, is an instance of a city. Uh, hyponymy, hypernymy relations are uh, the ones in a knowledge base, which give you an idea, uh, which give you a, an idea of how two different entities are linked to each other. So San Francisco is a type of a city. Acidic is the opposite of basic. Acidic is the opposite of basic. This is basically an antonymy relation. And there are different kinds of knowledge bases available on the internet for NLP. Uh, WordNet in particular gives you most of these, uh, WordNet establishes most of these relations for you, hyponymy, hypernymy, antonymy, meronymy, et cetera. So if you are interested in relationship extraction, please also have a look at the uh, WordNet paper, which basically gives you a very detailed idea of what kind of word relations exist. And coming back to the same thing, which I'm sure has been established since the first few NLP lectures that NLP applications need word meaning. Ranging from the sense disambiguation application to the translation application, question answering, conversational agents, summarization, everything needs to have a semantic representation. And unless you don't have a proper semantic representation, your actual model of trying to solve the problem is probably going to fail. Let's look at, let's start discussing the approaches now. So there are five types of approaches to relationship extractions. Each of them has been tried by different researchers and you can see a lot of papers on relationship extraction. Uh, to, uh, even today, I'm sure uh, this, uh, the state of the art approach has not crossed the F score of 89 or 90. So you probably still have scope to perform the task and maybe improve on whatever the researchers are doing. It started with hand-built patterns, which basically is rule-based relationship extraction. So let us let me try and explain this. So many instances of relationships, uh, these relationships can be identified through handcrafted patterns. These patterns are, in this particular approach, these patterns are something that you manually code in, that you manually type. So for example, the sentence, Paris is in France. So once you post tag it, you already have given your model an idea of the fact that Paris and France are nouns. Remember the NLP layers we were discussing yesterday? In the rule-based relationship extraction approach, once you have post tagged the sentence, then you have already established that two nouns are present in the, in the sentence. And then if you start coding in 
the manual relationship patterns, which is alpha here, then you may be able to use them to identify X is in Y. Hence, rule-based relationship extraction-based approaches, uh, th that's how they started. And for once you have coded these patterns, then you can use regular expressions to extract these relationships between any two different identities. But there is a major problem here. Even if you use re regular expressions, and even if you use, uh, even if you extract such relations for one sentence, you cannot probably code in all the rules, right? You wouldn't have the time, even if you hire lexiographers, I don't think it would be feasible to type in all the kinds of relationships or code all of them in. Hence, learning based uh, or supervised or unsupervised approaches came into the picture. So if you look at this example, Fred and Mary got married, uh, Fred and Mary got married. Uh, you would see that a regular expression based uh, relation, rule based relationship extraction approach would probably fail on this example. The intuition behind this at that point of time was that if you have a sentence which says agar is a substance prepared from a mixture of red algae such as gilidium, you would know from this text as a human what gilidium means, but would the machine know? No. You try to extract lexicosyntactic patterns. Okay, let's uh, let me explain what lexicosyntactic patterns are. Patterns are lexico here basically implies lexical, which means a word, and syntactic means syntactic basically talks about the representation in a sentence, the structure of the sentence and lexicosyntactic patterns basically means word structure based patterns. So how words are structured. So these rules can be structured as Y such as X or Y as X or X and Y or Y including X. So these are the rules which you manually code and then try to identify what relationship exists. So here are some of the rules that were coded by Hearst in their earlier paper. And this basically gives you an idea of how rule-based relationship extraction works. Of course, I already said that there are problems. It requires hand building patterns for each relation. It's hard to write. There are zillions of them. And of course, they're domain dependent. So if you even if you write uh, all the relationships for, let's say, a medical domain, if you try this approach uh, on uh, the patterns that you have written for medical domain on some other domain, for example, agriculture or entertainment, your model would probably fail. And you might not want to do this for all possible relations. And hence the accuracy on hyponymy extraction for Hearst was like really low. Moving on to the other approach, the next approach, it's bootstrapping or the semi-supervised approach. So I hope you are aware of the rule-based approach. Now, uh, bootstrapping or semi-supervised approach, what it does is if you don't have enough annotated text, you uh, make some seed instances, you code some of those patterns and use those patterns on the unannotated text. So it is considered semi-supervised and you want to see what those seed instances or seed patterns can they be used to do something useful? So for example, let's take this relationship of burial place. So Mark Twain is buried in Elmira. X is buried in Y. The grave of Mark Twain is in Elmira. Elmira is Mark Twain's final resting place. So Y is X's final rest resting place. So if you know these three patterns, then you can uh, look at the text and identify the relation burial place for any two different entities. So once you have identified these three seed patterns, then however differently the text is written, then you probably would be able to identify using a semi-supervised approach, how to create new tuples. If you do a sample Google search, these are the results from today on page two. So if you search for star is buried in star, you would probably find these results of what is buried in Aiken Park. Anesthesia is buried in Stark Ceremony. So Google has, of course, a lot of documents, which is indexes from all over the pitch. It indexes from all over the web. And in those documents, you can see the examples of such sentences. You 
once you have given the relation in you get the web documents as results out for uh, wherever these is buried in is mentioned the methodology for bootstrapping is once you prepare a few seed tuples uh, then you use then you create a tuple set for all of them then using them you search for more tuples and extract different patterns which can be related to your relationship once you have formed the pattern set you search for the pattern in your test documents or in the unseen documents per se and from the unseen documents once you have extracted all the tuples you put them in your relational table or the database that you are trying to construct for all the relationships so this is basically the methodolo methodology for a semi supervised approach there are some problems with bootstrapping as well so uh, dipre is a system which was uh, is a methodology which was released back in 1998 what they did was they extracted 15000 author book pairs with uh, quite good accuracy 95% and they and snowball which is another uh, i'm sure you can see the sense behind it snowballing uh, snowball is another approach which came back in 2000 they extract named entity patterns with up to 96 precision but please have a look at how these two approaches only look at a very specific domain author book pairs or named entity patterns which probably only gives you a person to person relation right so Uh, depending on the limited domain they could achieve this high accuracy but if tried in general domain and uh, to extract hyponymy from an unstructured text they probably their accuracies would probably reduce a lot so you have to have a lot of seeds for each relation to identify each relation and your approach when you use the semi supervised approach is sensitive to the original set of seeds because you are searching only for the type of those seeds in the unstructured text to identify further search patterns they, then you are probably limited right so the big there's a big problem of semantic drift at each iteration as well and the overall precision in a general domain does not tend to be that high so it requires a lot of hyperparameter parameter tuning as well and there is no probabilistic interpretation here so there are a lot of problems with semi supervised approaches as well and hence we move on to the supervised approaches now supervised approaches yes they are definitely good like any other problem when you try supervised approaches they require a labeled data set so first you have to define an inventory of output labels you have to define a classification label for relationship detection true or false and then you have to have a data set of the kind of relations you want to extract or you want to detect so located in employee of inventor of so the collected label the, there are a uh, pre collected label training data is available for use muc ace ace was released in 2003 as i said and there uh, okay I, i just remembered that there was a re release of ace in 2008 as well and once you have a labeled data set what you do is you define a feature representation based on either words or entity types or something else from that label data set and using those features you try and predict the class on the unseen data set or the new observations you choose the classifier that you want naive base max and svm and there are deep learning approaches as well and once you have gotten results for your predictions on the new observations then of course you evaluate the results based on the actual gold labels or the actual reference labels of the new observations so the as 2008 dataset looks like this is ha it has organization affiliation relations it has part to whole relations so it has person social relation it has improved on person so person social relation the business relations the family relations and there are a lot of improvements in the as 2008 dataset compared to the 2003 dataset the kind of features that you can use for relationship extraction can be categorized into three main categories the lightweight features is basically bag of words and bigrams and unigrams and looking at the entities themselves they could be named entities uh, and you could also look at the stemmed versions or the lemmatized versions of the words so 
these are lightweight features because they require only a little free processing so getting a representation or a tfidf score for each word in the corpus wouldn't be much of processing and it does not really require you to perform another nlp task which may be erroneous and thus may throw in that error of its predictions into your feature set given you have these lightweight features there are medium features medium weight features as well which require you to perform the task of chunking remember that nlp layer so if you perform chunking on the given test data set and you prepare base phrase chunk paths if you prepare paths between one identity to another identity if you have the tree kind of a relation and you have a bag of chunk heads which means you have a bag of the kind of relations that might exist in the text this is also a feature that you can use that can be obtained from the chunking task and then there are heavyweight features which require full syntactic parsing and full dependency parsing of for a particular language is not really an easy task that task in it itself requires a lot of data to be trained and then the dependency tree paths that you may get from the task may be erroneous you really don't want to get into dependency parsing for creating features for relationship extraction although it's a it's an option but you probably don't want to do it so uh, i i hope you remember the nlp layer we discussed yesterday and hence i could talk about lightweight medium weight and these heavyweight features in a much better manner the supervised relationship extraction approach basically is something that you have seen in other in, in other tasks that you might have done in the data science module of this course and supervised machine learning approaches is something that you have already studied what you basically need is a data set which has labels of the relationship identities which has labels uh, or which from which you can create a test data separately and unseen data for your training model but what you need to do is create features using different uh, uh, using different approaches and then you can use those features to try and predict the actual class on your test data set the problem with supervised relationship approaches is uh, is something that has been haunting nlp and machine learning for a while which is the actual availability of a labeled data set so making creating such labeled data sets is an expensive task you you probably cannot do it alone you cannot create a really big data data set alone hence research labs have lexicographers and annotators people who are on this job day and night to basically just annotate the data for you and even after a huge amount of labeled data set is collected a supervised relationship extraction approach may not be able to generalize between different relations so if you have if your training data has seen an example then it probably can predict the unseen observation correctly but if you if it has not seen an example of a relation then it probably won't be able to predict the unseen uh, unseen class unseen data class correctly because it may not be able to generalize given the supervised relationship approach experience that i have had then comes the distant supervision which requires less amount of data so the hypothesis here is that if two entities belong to a certain relation any sentence containing those two entities is likely to express that relation and the key idea here is that you use a database of relations to get a lot of noisy training examples by noisy training examples here what is meant is that you may not have exact sentences which say san francisco is a city in california you may have a longer sentence which says that san francisco observed uh, an earthquake and the city of california and the state of california has given them some aid and the idea here is that using weak supervision you should be able to uh, you should basically be able to get exact relationship between these two identities perfectly so instead of hand creating c tuples and using hand labeled corpus 
you just get a lot of noisy training examples from a data so from a data set so let's look at this so if you have a structured text like wikipedia you take the wikipedia document make it a corpus basically a sentence and 10 sentence sentence document then collect all the noun pairs from it and look at a knowledge base like word that okay let me take a pause here and uh, i i i know that you have not had your lecture on knowledge bases yet but let just try and run with me here when i mention wordnet or the word knowledge bases or concept net or free base for you once that lecture has been taken i'm sure things would be much clearer in picture to you uh, what wordnet is is basically a knowledge base which provides you something called syn sets and syn sets have synonymous words along with the definition of a concept an example of that con an example sentence of a concept and all these concepts are linked with each other with hypernymy hyponymy relations and meronymy relations and antonymy relations and hence this huge knowledge base is something that you can use for relationship extraction because each concept is linked to each other okay so once you have collected the noun pairs you look at is the pair is a in wordnet and then you parse the sentence so for example atom and deuter atom is called atom called deuterium atom is called deuterium and then you look for these two noun pairs and the relationship between them and hence you start extracting these patterns once these patterns have been extracted once these dependency paths has been have been created then you train your classifier on these patterns and then you finally get a model which can probably predict unseen uh, which can probably predict correctly even the unseen observations the sample patterns uh, from for a distant supervision learning based data set should look something like this so sarcoma and cancer are related because the sentence an uncommon bone cancer called ostrich ostrogenic sarcoma blah 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 deuterium and atom are connected so any two identities in a sentence if they have a relation that relationship would be inherent in the sentence is basically the hypothesis of distance supervision and the new pairs that you can discover from such an approach is are also seen here that hat creek outfit is a ranch hiv1 is the aids virus Uh, betio mush is an attraction and such new pairs can be discovered from semi super uh, from these distant weak supervised methods or the distant supervised methods how you can collect data or for and such such patterns from free base wikipedia or a corpus is seen here in this slides so just run with me here if you have a corpus text which a document which says bill gates founded microsoft in 1975 bill gates founder of microsoft attended harvard blah 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 and you also have a knowledge base like free base which gives you a relationship founder bill gates and microsoft founder larry page google college attended bill gates harvard then you can collect training data from both of these like this moving on so the first instance that was collected was the relationship between bill gates and microsoft label founder the feature is x founded y or x is the founder of y because you had two sentences for that particular label for the very first instance about bill gates and microsoft and hence you have two such features similarly bill gates and harvard college attended similarly larry page and google founder now once you have collected the data for all the positive samples you cannot really work with machine learning unless you have some negative samples as well right so you sample 1% of absolutely unrelated pair of identities so larry page and microsoft no relation larry page and harvard no relation bill gates and google no relation and hence once you have this such negative samples as well you append them to your training data then prepare your test data feed it to the classifier and see what happens so all in all distance supervision is something which requires you to have 
which does not require a lot of labeled corpus but from a knowledge base or from a corpus you can create some training data and based on that training data you can find new pairs as well so if a pair of ident ent entities appears in 10 sentences and each sentence has five features extracted from it the entity pair all in all will have 50 associated associated features and hence labeling uh, such labeling such identities or such pattern of ident identities in the un unseen data or the test data that you have would be much more easier Moving on to the unsupervised approach, of course, you have uh, so the distance supervision uh, paradigm or the approach requires knowledge bases. What if you don't have good knowledge bases? Only if you have text, then you probably want to use the unsupervised approaches. The one of the unsupervised approaches, which was popular back in the day, was DIRT, which is discovery of inference rules from text. And what it does is it looks at dependency paths between two noun pairs. So, uh, uh, so uh, between noun pairs or noun verb pairs. So if noun verb is a pair, if you find a noun and verb pair in a sentence, then what's the subject between them? And what it what usually unsupervised approaches do is that they apply the for relationship extraction to be specific they apply the extended distributional hypothesis so if two dependency paths tend to occur in similar contexts the meaning of the paths tend to be similar i will explain this with the help of the further slides but uh, let's just go back a step and talk about the distributional hypothesis in general i don't know if you are aware of it or not but the distributional hypothesis is that if two words appear in the same context and keep appearing in the same context, then there is a probability that those two words are related. And uh, if two words are related, what will happen in the text is that they will keep appearing within the same context. And hence, you can sample a distribution between these two words and say that they are somehow semantically related to each other. When this is extended to paths, what you get is if two paths tend to occur in similar context, then the meanings of the path tend to be similar. And hence, this is known as the extended distributional hypothesis. So uh, what unsupervised learning approaches in relationship extraction uh, problem, what they do is they define the path similarity and not just the word similarity. And how they define the path similarity is based on the co-occurrence counts uh, in the text or in the corpus that you have. And this basically extends the idea of a previous work from 1998 from words to paths. So if you look at the examples from the dirt work, the top 20 most similar paths to X solve X solves Y is, are given here. So Y is solved by X, X resolves Y. So all these patterns with different words in between can be in the same text, but Given these, uh, despite the fact that these uh, words in between or the, the actual context in between X and Y is different, despite that unsupervised approach of the unsupervised approach by DIRT was able to find out that the inherent relation between X and Y is the fact that X can solve Y. Then there was a prob the problem of ambiguity uh, with the DIRT methodology or the DIRT approach that what, what happens if X addresses Y is a path is found. Uh, given that X addresses Y can occur in different contexts. Uh, so I addressed my letter to him personally means I uh, wrote my letter towards him personally. And she addressed an audience basically means this. What she did was she delivered some sort of talk where she addressed the audience. And will Congress finally address an issue? So these three address words have different meanings and occur in different contexts. But what DIRT does is, is basically combines them in the same relationship, which is wrong. So DIRT has had its problems. You can read the rest of them in the slide later. So there was a need for a better approach which uses which takes into account the semantics of the words in between two identities and this approach was presented in 2012 i think by yao et al 
and what it does is that it is it's, it's basically a four step approach what it does is in the first step it extracts tuples entity entity and the path between them from the corpus and then it constructs a feature representation for every tuple then what it does it it groups the tuples into sense clusters which usually is what the unsupervised approach is do clustering i'm sure you probably heard of lda latent dirich let association if you have had your lectures on machine learning and unsupervised approaches before and after that once these clusters have been formed this is something novel that this approach does it clusters the sense clusters into semantic relations so basically a cluster of clusters and then at the very root you will probably have the head cluster and you'll probably have less amount of clusters let's look at step 1 in detail so you start with a corpus you apply lemmatization nr tagging and dependency parsing why do you apply lemmatization because you probably want to extract root words because you want to try and extract the word meanings you remember how we talked about this approach takes semantics into uh, uh, into consideration so once you have lemmatized the text and have the root word after lemmatization or morphological analysis then you have an idea of the sense of a word once you have named entity tagged the whole corpus then you have an idea of noun verb adjective adverb or what are uh, oh, sorry i'm i'm really sorry this is not post tagging then you have an idea of whether this is an organization or whether this is a location or whether this is a person once you have any are tagged the corpus then you can use dependency parsing to find out the relationship between organization person 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 or person to organization or organization to organization so after any are tagging that what dependency parses it parse does is it forms a tree between all the named entities that you have tagged so for each pair of entities in the sentence extract the dependency path from the tree that is the output of your dependency parsing and you form a tuple consisting of those two entities and you take the path into consideration you filter out the rare tuples once with very direct objects and the result for this uh, approach was basically 1 million tuples and 500000 entities on the nyt corpus that they used i have tried to explain this portion of uh, the slide in general which you can do with any corpus but the result is basically talking about what they did on the nyt corpus so once you have done that the step 2 is feature representation feature representation what it basically does is it takes entity names so la lakers is basically a basketball team in the national basketball association nba and new york knicks is also another team so how these entity names are related to each other as a tuple so la lakers is basically associated to la and ny uh, new york knicks is basically associated to ny so use the bag of words which looks at the overlap between any two words and it reduces the sparsity in the overall features that you are trying to build the words between and around these two entities you can remove the stop words on the corpus or the words with capital letters it probably would be some names and you include these two words to left and right and eventually once you are done doing this your document uh, your uh, the the set of sentences that you are working on or the document can be clustered into a particular topic so if you're talking about la lakers or new york knicks you're probably talking about sports if you're talking about the president or the decisions which they took if you're talking about prime minister shri narendra modi then you're probably talking about politics if you're talking about bank and money then this document would go into finance so once an lda topic model is done with all of your set of documents it would cluster them into their individual clusters once those clusters are formed uh, so basically lda topic model is something which uses matrix factorization approaches i'm sure you have learned this in your unsupervised learning unsupervised ml lectures and each tuple that you have extracted from the dependency parse tree that we were discussing is assigned into a particular topic so each tuple when when i talk about organization person person and the path between them this tuple goes into a 
particular topics uh, if we're talking about organization organization this tuple goes into a particular topic so tuples with the same topic finally constitute your one cluster and an example would be something like this so if you look at sports americans ireland yankees angels ecuador these are teams and they were clustered into sports and then you have the entertainment cluster similarly you have the music or art cluster and the path they follow is a play b so basically these teams either play each other or in entertainment uh, these uh, these people play in music art these people probably play that instrument so i hope you understand a play b is the path between all these tuples which have been clustered into a particular cluster once that is done the sense clusters have different paths have multiple different paths and the common sense clusters using hierarchical agglomerative clustering are then clustered into common clusters and what it does is it uses cosine similarity between sense cluster feature so if two different clusters are very related to each other semantically related to each other you can find out find that out using cosine similarity based score between all the tuples or all the words in the cluster if you have a high semantic similarity high cosine similarity then you combine those cluster and finally when you have that cluster of clusters the output will probably look like this so in entertainment a who play b a play b or star a as b is are the kind of paths that you would see and in sports a play b is the common path that you would also see similarly you can see that these paths can these uh, these a b patterns and these paths are built into all these clusters now and just like dirt each is the here in this approach as well each semantic relation has multiple paths but one path can appear in multiple semantic relations so the problem that dirt was facing the very problem that different context of dependency paths was not being taken into account this unsupervised approach basically solves that so this these are the kind of approaches that can be used to look at uh, to try and solve the problem of relationship extraction i hope i have explained them well we what we did in this lecture was we discussed the problem of relationship extraction and in general i gave you an idea of the fact that how relationship extraction is a sub problem of information extraction or ie what ie basically does is it takes unstructured text and gets a structured or a meaningful representation text from it we saw quite a few examples of how relationship types can be and what kind of relationships can be extracted from a text and we saw some applications of these in the real world scenario and what we did was we also discussed in detail how relationship extraction approaches work uh this is basically a classification problem and text classification lecture was just delivered yesterday so i did not go deep into the classification methodologies that can be used you can go to the relationship extraction page on nlpprogress.com and look at the latest state of the art uh, approaches that have been tried for the problem of relationship extraction so nlpprogress.com is like a really good resource if you want to be in touch with what's happening in the area or in a sub area so, so please go to that site and see what deep learning based approaches have been tried or what are the classical approaches and what were their results uh, so i i hope i was clear uh, thank you so much for listening to me i am done with the lecture if you have any questions please throw them at me now uh, there is a question in the chat can you briefly tell what types of algorithms can be used for re to extract information right i'll just go to the chat and okay but uh, i'll just answer it here so any classification algorithm can be used for re so if you are trying supervised uh, classification approaches then your classical algorithms of svm or maxent or logistic regression for example can be used you just have to have some labeled data set and from that labeled data set you can probably cut off a portion and make your test data set and then try and evaluate how your 
how your approach does the only catch here is that the features that you prepare from your uh, in your training data set or from your training data set they have to be something different because almost every kind of feature extraction has been tried on supervised approaches including the latest one using which uh, which is getting vector representations from a model such as bert prashant are there any other questions in the chat which i can answer uh, let me just have a look at them here where is the chat okay can you briefly tell what type of algorithms is something that i have answered name of the site was nlpprogress.com and we have to create a database for this x solves y with other relations x is solved by y etc uh, see look you don't really have to create a database there are data sets available pre created data sets available for trying to solve a problem you probably have to come up with a novel architecture or a novel method of extracting different kind of features okay because i i'm sure there uh, there a lot has been tried for relationship extraction you don't really have to go into creating a data set especially when you are beginning in nlp what you need to do is you need to take a previous data set and a previous approach from a paper and try to reproduce it on your own just so that you get a hint of how you can solve the problem a flavor of how you can solve a problem if you can reproduce a previous paper or a pre i'm sorry or a previous methodology then you have the flavor of the problem maybe then you can go on and you know change or improve on that method okay is this relation extraction a part of the pipeline of nlp we saw yesterday or is it like one of the tasks with language it's it's a task it's pretty much a task in itself relationship extraction is something uh, that uses the those nlp layers of your named entity tagging uh, you saw the layers yesterday right so the tasks in those nlp layers is something that it uses it's a task in itself Uh, okay, so this is Prashant. I like to mention just a few points. So, see, try to understand. So, you know, let go of any technical technicalities when you are trying to look at a problem. Okay, when you are looking at sentiment, try to ask that what information you are trying to get from that. So, in that case, it will be capturing the what the person is trying to feel. In this case, it is trying to get relationship between entities in the text. it can be about translating from one language to the another whatever pipeline that you have been seeing till now which are neural based okay so if you remember in the in, in the introductory slides yesterday i showed you the architecture that you have the raw text you you convert it into a vector representation in many ways then you feed it to the model and then you try to either do classification which we saw yesterday but as well as you can generate languages by you know outputting at every time step when we saw the lstm so point being that the the way you are using the architecture is the pipeline yes but that is that can be used for multiple task okay so don't try to confuse between the technicalities with the task so i hope that clears this doubt that any nlp task you convert to a vector representation depending on what you want to do then choose a specific architecture it can be a simple neural network or it can be a complicated a little complicated not complicated sequence to sequence or it can be a very latest one transformer based architecture such as bird okay so once you make the distinction tackling nlp problems will be little easier for you guys with respect to others who are just looking at from a technical technical point of view so what then happens that they think that okay fine this particular kind of architecture can only be used for this particular kind of problem so yeah i mean i hope just an add on or what diptesh already explained so look look what the task is trying to achieve and then look look at how it can be achieved using any of the architecture either classical or the latest neural based okay thanks prashant i'll take it from here uh, guys i am sure there are a lot of doubts uh, if you have any just unmute or unmute unmute your mic and ask me i'll try and explain whatever questions you have explain the answers to whatever questions you have to the best of my ability sir can i ask yeah. one question yes please go ahead 
sir uh, uh, as you told about the relationship i mean uh, the entities which are closely related so we will be putting into same category and right. uh, and what is my question is suppose uh, i want uh, suppose i am searching that i am having the symptoms like i am having fever cough or headache like this so uh, there are at, at the back end there uh, there are many diseases which is which is which are which are very closely related like uh, okay. can, uh, suppose uh, cancer is having yeah so what you mean symptoms. to say is the symptoms can be same similar yeah 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 okay so cancer is having same suppose covid is having the same thing uh, okay. they, or they may be the subset of each other like that right so Uh, so there is a possibility that if i say uh, this this is my sim- uh, symptom so it will be predicting and giving uh, giving me as you are having covid i'm because right. they are very similarly related so how uh-huh. we are going to look at that uh see uh, what you can probably do is collect all the symptoms for that person so what you're trying Context. to talk about Context. yeah yeah so what you're trying to talk about is some lies something in the medical domain okay so once you have a good amount of labeled corpus from the medical domain or even unlabeled corpus just build a word embeddings based model a very good model on that particular domain and they will that model will have an idea of the context right so if you get the amount of the the kind of symptoms that a patient is facing then those symptoms based on those symptoms that model will probably give you a good amount of context and then you can probably try and resolve this this is actually a tough problem the one you're talking about because symptoms can be similar and even doctors initially have problems diagnosing your actual disease that you have or the actual problem that you have given just your symptoms doctors actually take a guess right i i'm sure you know of it you go to a doctor you you go to a doctor and you say ki sir i have a headache sir i have cough as well sir i also have you know a lot of phlegm then the doctor probably associates those symptoms in his mind and given his experience and given his knowledge of the human body they can associate your symptoms with a particular disease it's actually a very tough problem for nlp per se given just the symptoms trying to find out what the disease might be so the nlp model would uh, distribute this on based on probability and that probability distribution can actually point out towards a uh, uh, a wrong disease which is a larger problem again so it's it's tough but yes you can if you if your model has a good idea of the context of the symptoms that you have then it can be solved yes uh, so sir actually uh, sir actually the question he asked uh, there are some competition which is going on uh, related to that uh, like uh, someone in the hackathon uh, there is some uh, there is uh, similar problem statement which uh, right. like uh they they said to make a chatbot in which uh, they they input a sum of the symptoms and right. uh, like uh, your how is uh, like chatbot is basically uh, try to talk with you and um, tell you what is going on with you like what the disease might be fair and uh, okay. and he's giving the some relevant output in the form of solution i get it i get the problem that you're trying to explain to me So, so what's your question here no, 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 i'm asking like uh, in this case uh, like uh, we use like how the thing happened behind that what i want to ask like how your pipeline works ha huh. for such a problem yes sir how the uh, sentence like how uh, when so we put in a let sentence let us or... let us say someone inputs into the chat bot that i have a headache and i have fever and i also have cough right your yes, your your own data set must have a combination of uh, symptoms pointing to a particular disease right so anything which comes in the context of headache with fever with a cough can be pointing out towards a 
a disease, right? Let us say that disease is X. Okay. So once you have a training data set, I'm sure if it's a hackathon, they would have given you some sort of training data set. Uh, using that data set, if you can build a model and for features, if you can use word representations, that uh, word representation with, with basic, what it basically will do is it'll give you an idea of the, it will give you an idea of what context these three symptoms lie in. Okay. So if you can build a good model, uh, build a good uh, word representation model, this context, maybe the context from that model may be able to help you solve this problem. Uh, and also the general question, uh, like uh, whenever I solve the problem related to NLP, so right. I have the corpus. So I generally use stemming and like uh, lower casing and like this kind of feature extraction. Basically, so what, huh, so what else uh, we can use? Like far from that, uh, you have explained the relationship. So whenever I have to use some relationship extraction, so what should we use in terms so of practice? For, for relationship extraction in particular, go to nlpprogress.com and look at the latest paper or the paper with the highest F score or precision and see what they are doing in today's day and age. Practically speaking, that should be your way to go. If you are already participating in hackathons and creating chatbots, then you're way advanced than what I thought and the way I delivered this lecture. <laughs> but uh, I mean, classically, for relationship extraction after lemmatizing or after getting the root words in your corpus, you should look for stop words and remove those stop words. You can get easily get a list of stop words for any language on the internet. I'm sure there are GitHub repositories which uh, do NLP and have the stop words list in them. Once you are done removing the stop words, then maybe look for anything. Uh, uh -huh, one, of, one of the most also, one of the most common ways of pre-processing is trying to separate the commas or the exclamation marks from the words so that the word in itself is a unit or a token and you don't have a special character or something associated with it, which may end up giving you a bad representation from the word vector model or end up giving you no representation at all, citing that it's out of vocabulary word, right? So remove those special characters or put spaces between the word and the special characters, remove stop words, lemmatize, lowercase everything. This pre-processing pipeline is, is it's pretty established and I'm sure you'll find it in papers. So don't worry about that. I, I uh, hope thanks. I've explained some of the things though. Yeah, yeah thanks a lot. Sure. I had a question uh, regarding this relationship extraction. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, in the case of multi-level classification, I could have various relationship between words, right? So in this yes. case, what kind of algorithm should we use? Because one word can be mapped to every other word in second altogether. And in terms of binary classification, all these forest-based models won't work. And binary uh, and this uh, softmax yes. entropy, binary cross entropy also wouldn't work. So in that case, then, what algorithm? Then you be? probably use probably need a sophisticated architecture which takes context into account. So for example, use some RNN-based okay. architecture like LSTM or BILSTM which okay. takes context into account and which can give you a better, better modeling of the relationship between two entities. Okay. Fair. So use a sophisticated architecture, use a deep learning based architecture. If SVM or other classification based approaches don't work for you. And for the word representation models, everyone says this, I probably hate myself for saying this, but use word. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? If there are none, I would really like to go and have dinner. <laughs> I guess that's it. Uh, Professor Amit, are you still online? Sir, uh, one last question. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, sir, but uh, like... No, no, that's okay. Uh, in general, like, 
mathematics behind this question similarity for clustering right so each word has but like we make a uh, like uh, how like how correlation work uh, we create a correlation between the words right how particular word use, you basically use see uh, if i want to talk about it at the very basic level it's your distributional hypothesis which i explained that once you have uh, if you see two words which occur with each other then they will occur with each other in the same context the basis of all this is distributional hypothesis and if you are talking about the mathematics behind it the mathematics is kind of coincidence counts and the approach on that occurrence count can be different so if you are talking about clustering lda is one of the most trusted uh, unsupervised approaches look at how the actual i i don't have the slides for it otherwise i would have explained lda to you uh, i have performed lda for quite a few of my i've used lda for quite a few of my experiments so look at the maths behind topic modeling look at the maths behind lda and i'm sure once you understand how lda takes coincidence counts into account or how lda builds cluster you will have a better idea of how clustering happens so sir basic intuition is uh, the weightage given to the particular word with respect to what it's coincidence counts with yes 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 so count doesn't it's, matter it's right not, like how no no it's not just the weightage or just the count it's the way every different clustering approach models it so there are other clustering approaches as well right they okay. do something different lda does something different for some task lda performs better for some other task maybe some other clustering approach performs better right so depending on your task which approach you want to use or if you want for the same task if you want to use multiple unsupervised approaches then go and look ahead go ahead and look into all the architectures and then try and understand the math or the you know uh, to get an understanding of how this approaches work yeah sure sir thank you so much sure sure have a great day sir oh, good night thanks thanks good night good night uh, professor amit are you are you, are you still with us hello uh, hi yes yeah I'm done with so I, i'm done with the questions and the lecture yes all right thank you so much no oh, thanks for giving us this opportunity prof right. thanks good sure. night good night everyone bye bye